there, Atlanta. I'm your host, Simone Jameson, for On the Guest List. And welcome with me to the Radio Airways event here at Backstage in Atlanta, where we'll be doing some exclusive interviews with some local radio personalities, doing some networking, and learning about some promoters and some of your community activists here in Atlanta. Keep it locked here. You don't want to miss it. Welcome, welcome to the airwaves with us here. I'm your host, Simone Jameson, for On The Guest List. And joining me now is D. Hill, the founder and the master planner behind this event tonight. How are you, D? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much for coming. Hey, thank you. Thank you for hosting this event. And as I understand it, you've been doing this for a little while, for a little while now. What do you expect to happen to really take place at this event tonight? Um, this evening, just for all the radio stations to get together and, and network, of course, we're going to acknowledge them for being new radio stations to the airwaves, and we just thank everybody for coming out tonight. What are some of the radio stations that you've seen? Um, a lot of internet radio stations, blog, uh, blog Talk Radio, excuse me, um, Hot Talk Radio, you know, they are always supporting the D Hill radio show in any events that I have. And um, Instinct Radio and Beat Break Radio, they're here also, you know, and they're just like family, always supporting everything that I do. Good, that's good to hear. Oh, yeah. yeah, we've got some internet radio and some, some terrestrial radio. So being that internet is, is internet radio has really become mainstream, how do you... How do you think that internet radio or blog radio has really sort of changed the course of the industry? What do you think has contributed? Definitely with internet radio and blog talk radio, you can pretty much say whatever you want to say. You know, they have a lot of good content, a lot of good information on blog talk radio or internet radio that you can't hear on the AM and FM stations. You know, a lot of... Um, uh, personality, radio personalities from AM and FM stations have their own uh, internet radio stations on the side as well. So internet and blog talk definitely definitely supply a lot of good information. Absolutely. Internet and blog talk radio is the future of radio, so just, just roll with it. Tell us more about your personal story. How did you get involved with radio? Actually, to be honest, I started, I used to have my own TV station on uh, People's TV, and I wanted to try radio and um, just do a six-month run, see if I like it, and I've been on it ever since 2005 and fell in love with it. Wow. Yeah, so I got over 15 years of experience in radio. <laughs> yeah, and love it. Ooh. That's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to hear. So you are an industry veteran. Tell us, what are some of your favorite topics and things that you just kind of like dishing out over the airwaves? Definitely um, girl talk, you know, we talk about any and everything, and definitely one of the big hits is when you talk about relationships. So those two probably are my favorites. Mm -hmm. So being uh, in the radio industry, I would, I would think that you have the chance to maybe interview some, some guests and, and things like that. Who Could you name some of your most interesting and some guests that stand out to you over the past few years? I would say the one that stood out to me the most is probably interviewing John Lewis, Congressman John Lewis. So that's probably like one of my highlights of my career because it's just so hard to get in contact with him. Yeah, so he's, he's probably like the most that stands out that I've interviewed. Can you give us some more background on him for those of us that don't really know him that well? Uh, well, when I talked to him, I really don't know much about him, but <laughs> when we talked to him, it was more about politics and things like that nature. So we really didn't get into much of his personal life and, you know, such like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of politics, we are in a really contentious election cycle. And speaking of, uh, speaking of those type of issues, how do you feel that Atlanta, um, in terms of community, uh, in terms of issues, mm -hmm. to to really be brought to the forefront, what are some um, what are some issues and what are some things that stick out to you in terms of problems or, or things that really need to be talked about in the media here in Atlanta? Definitely, how to make our school system a better system. Um, definitely, we need to bring more jobs here to Atlanta and I think those are the most two important things that I try to put, put pretty much stay focused on. Yeah definitely you know and lifting up our community. Yeah definitely. Beautiful. So are you originally from Atlanta? I'm not. I'm from a small town called Andersonville, Georgia. 
um, born and raised, but I, you know, I went to school here, so they say I'm ATLian, but hey. <laughs> Which school? North Clayton. Uh -huh. Yeah, North Clayton. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, so what, what has been some of your favorite experiences being in this type of industry? Just meeting all the people that, you know, it has opened so many doors for me. Yeah, just meeting the um, people, um, meeting different radio stations, hearing their background, how they get, got started, and just listening to some of the people that they've interviewed. So, you know, this has been a good uh, look for me. Yeah, pretty good experience for me. Beautiful. So one last question. Why would you say that that you really do this? So what, what fuels the fire behind your passion for this? Radio, um, because back in 2014, a lot of people still don't know, a lot of radio stations still don't know that we actually got the bill passed at the state capitol. Now it's April the 21st through the 25th. It's men and women in radio week. And I'm a, I, have, I come from a big family because, like, like I say, it's all about bringing everybody together, especially these radio stations. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. How can we stay connected with you and with the events that you have coming up? Sure, um, ddhill at uh, gmail.com and follow me on Instagram and Facebook under ddhill. And also, we're honoring some of the first female personalities of V103, 104.1, 107.5, March the 9th at the state capitol. So I'm very excited about that. Beautiful, D. Well, hopefully we'll get to we'll get to chat it up with them as well. It's been yeah, we appreciate catching up with you and all your glorious endeavors, being an entrepreneur and being a boss businesswoman. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you all coming out. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> this has been an interview with D. Hill, founder of Welcome to the Airwaves, and y'all stay posted for more. Thank y'all for continuing to roll with us here. Welcome to the Airwaves. Joining me now is Wanda D. How are you tonight, Wanda? Super fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. Well, you look it. I'm loving your look and I'm loving the hair. What inspired that? Oh, just doing my thing, girl. Just doing my thing. This is how I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up like this. I, I understand that. I understand that fully. Tell us more about your program, the I Am Enough Talk Show, and what we can expect to hear on it. Okay, well, the I Am Enough talk show is designed to just pull out people's greatness. I showcase people's talent, whether it's in the um, entertainment industry or entrepreneur, you're a developer, business, or community activist. I want to just promote greatness. So that's what we do. We come in and just figure out how we can weed through the mess and get to our greatness. That's what it's Beautiful. Can you give us some tidbits on how one would do that? Well, I think first you got to identify with what moves you, what stirs your soul up, you know, because that's where you want to always go to what you can do naturally and then build on that. Get the tools that you need to bring everything out and just walk in that. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. If it's something that burns inside of you, just go for it. Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Who are you? So your passion for for having this talk show and for doing radio was did that come naturally for you or is that something that you just sort of transitioned into and tell us about that? Well, in 2010, I started my first show. I was in real estate and the market was doing some crazy things. So I had to figure out a way how to connect the dots together to keep it moving. So at first I started um, just showcasing my my um, homes and then uh, also touching the community with bringing other people in to talk about what they did and then the community part and that kind of just developed from there you know so I just love it I love talking to people and, and helping them out in any way I can yeah what has been the best experience for you working on this talk show as well as in media probably meeting new people yeah that's it I love to meet people so the best thing is just meeting meeting new people Absolutely. Great. So what type of topics do you cover in your I Am Enough talk show? I know it's about empowerment, it's inspiring, but what kind of topics specifically can we hear on there? Well, like this Sunday, we're doing a show on um, with the cast of Damnation, and they're uh, doing a, a play, which I'm also co-producing. So they're doing that play, and they're going to be talking. I'm be talking to the different actors about why they're doing what they're doing and what's moving them in the play. We've also had things about um, the community and like the black dollar, how we should spend our black dollar. 
So I've had people on there talking about just different ways to put into, you know, building up our community. Uh, some of the other topics would be uh, like Black Lives Matters. We, we handled that. And of course, you know, we got this upcoming voting issue and just, just kind of making people be responsible for what they're supposed to do. Yeah. I love that. And I love that. I feel like the media is the mediator for that. So you had touched on a little bit about community. What are some issues that you believe are really sort of taking place here in Atlanta that need to be brought to light? Uh, I guess holding people accountable, you know, with our um, politicians, making them do what they're supposed to do. Um, also parents and it just everybody getting involved. Because if we don't take care of, of what we're leaving, then we're not going to leave anything for our children. You know, so I'm very passionate about that. And everybody seems to be concerned with the presidency. But there's a greater issue at, at home, like putting the right people in stu in, on your city council or the uh, school board, you know, electing the right people. So I think if we can't have dialogue to discover what we really need, then we're going to be lost. So that's why that's really, really important to me. Extremely important. Absolutely. And I love that we, you are, people like you and I, we are giving people a voice, continuing to give people a voice in 2016. And I think it's really important that people do their research and really sort of know what's going on because, you know, there are a lot of different sources out there and, and not all of them are real, exactly credible, you know, so it, that's definitely important too. Tell us more about your background, where are you from, and when you're not on the airwaves or doing your talk show, what are you doing? Okay, well, originally I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I'm a transplant. I came here in uh, 19, what, 98. So um, when I'm not doing that, I'm a full-time granny. I take care of my granddaughter full-time. I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> and, um, and outside of that, I'm just real creative. So I'm also a writer. I have a book. It's titled I Am Enough. It's, um, I write poetry, short stories, and now I'm working on a, a TV drama. Yeah. Beautiful. Tell us more about that book and the TV drama that you have coming well, out. The, the book is about, um, about my situation and what I went through in, poet, in, in a poetic form. And also, I call them shorter than short stories because they're not your traditional rhythmic type of poetry, but more like situational, and it tells a story, and it unfolds. So um, I'm very excited about that. And that's just... I, I guess that just catapults everything that I'm about, you know, like telling a story and hopefully that will help somebody get to their next level. Yeah. And then with the um, with the drama, with the TV thing, I just want to take that and develop like different people into, again, everything's on mission, you know, with what we go through and why we go through it to get to where we need to go. Yeah. Incredible. How would you say your personal experiences has affected your journey into radio and into the media and into doing some of these projects? Um, I would say basically because I, I, I feel like it's a responsibility that when you go through something and you learn something, you need to share and pass it on. I, I feel so connected to people to where I can't be great if you're not great. So I think everything that I've went through, it was for a purpose. You know, every tragedy, every wrong turn, it was, it was to find something, you know. So I just want to pass that along because it's never too, it's never too late to learn something new and it's, you're never too old to give something back. I love that, Wanda. You are never too old to give something back and everybody has a personal story. And I believe, like you said, everybody has a purpose and, and there's a reason, rhyme and reason for things happening. Thank you, Wanda. Where can we stay connected with you? What are your websites and social media? Okay, well, um, the easiest way is uh, www.wtts um, empowers. That's my company's website. And then I am enough 365. That's also a personal website. That's the best way. And I'm on social media, so you can find me on Instagram, you know, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, I'm there. <laughs> Wanda D. That's me. Thank you, Wanda. Wanda D, that's me. And can I, inter can I interject? You do not look like a granny. Oh. You look so good. Well, thank you. <laughs> granny. This is the new granny look. You know, you run around with grandkids. You got to stay, you know, yeah. looking good. Stay stylish. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm a proponent for, for, for looking. Yeah. You know that. You know that. <laughs> thank you so much, Wanda. Enjoy the rest of the okay. evening, okay? And you'll stay tuned for more great interviews.
thank you y'all for watching us. I'm here now with Kaylee May and Audrey Amateur here at the Welcome to the Radio Airwaves. How are you, Kayle? I'm fine, and you? Doing great. And how are you, Audrey? I'm doing wonderful, and how are you? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Tell us what brings you beautiful ladies out here tonight. What do you expect out of this event? Well, we are here with representing Success Radio, where our, we are here uh, co host with Miss Audrey here, and we have Nina Bell, and we have Marcia De Costa. I can't never pronounce her last name as well, but we're here um, representing them, and also another show that I have is Messages of Love on Instinct Radio. We're a part of um, Flavor Aid. So we're here representing them tonight and to meet some of these other fantastic radio talk shows hosts. We've had a wonderful Absolutely. Time. Do you share the same sentiments, Audrey? I do, and I want to thank, uh, thank D. Hill for having this because we have met a lot of wonderful people that's in radio. Mm -hmm. So tell me in a nutshell, what has your experience been like in radio, and how does it sort of shape the women that you are today? You know, I wasn't going this route as being a radio host. It kind of dropped in our lap. We were guests on one show. The next month, we were radio talk show hosts. So evidently, everything worked out well, and we have enjoyed that. And we have what we use our platform for Success Radio is for to bring awareness to different things that are going on in the community. Like we did one on Stop the Violence. We did one on voting and the importance of voting. And we did one on uh, sex trafficking and the importance of this. And just, just bringing awareness to different things. That's what we use our platform for. And out of that, it came the, uh, we have a live forum every other month that's called the Movement Forward, Let's Stop the Violence. So we have that where we have a panelist of community leaders and we offer the community to come in and ask them questions of what can we do to help stop the crime in our communities. I love that. I love that. Stopping the violence movement. Audrey, how do, how do you feel about, about what Kale has said? And do you agree? Do you, share, do you share the same viewpoints? I do. I do. I share the same viewpoints. And uh, we're, um, we just want to help people. And that's what our Success Radio is about, going out, helping people, and just giving them the information because knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How did you get your start in radio and how did your personal, uh, what is your personal backstory and where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia and um, my start in radio just dropped in our lap. Like Kel said, you know, we um, thank you to Keisha Reed Rivers, I'm sorry, with I Am uh, Flavor. She um, had an opening and she liked our personality and she asked if we wanted to step in and we did. Mm -hmm. All right. So this question is for you, Kale. Uh, what has been the most interesting part of being a radio personality? Just getting on. What I like about Instinct Radio is it is um, it's audible like all other radio shows, but it's also visual. So your audience can really see your emotions when you're talking about things. So like when we were talking about sex trafficking, they can see the aha moments that we had with like, oh, my God, we didn't know that happened. So having your guests on there and just really seeing the emotions and waking up and, and the education that we're giving into communities, that, that's, that's one of the best things that I like about it. Beautiful, beautiful. And this question is for you, Audrey. Okay. So um, I know when you're talking about success, I mean, you know, it's, it's good, it's motivational, it's inspirational, but you will have some naysayers, some people out there that don't necessarily agree with everything that you're saying. Um, how do you, how do you combat those people? I mean, how do you, how do you deal with them? What, what kind of message do you have for them? We just ask them to listen and pay attention to what we're saying, because in order for you to be successful in life, it's not just having a good job, you know, a nice house, a nice car and stuff. It's fixing yourself from the inside out. So we just ask them to just listen, you know, come come to some of our live forums and just get on the radio. Comment on things. If you have, you know, a question about something that we say, you can call in and uh, comment on it, you know, and just say, well, I don't understand that. Can you give me a better understanding of it? So we just ask them to interact with us so that we can get to them what they need. Okay. Beautiful. So now you had mentioned earlier, Kale, that that instinct radio and your talk show in particular is not just audio, it's visual. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is, there's a video component, and where can people watch and keep up with that? 
they can go to instinctradio.net, Success Radio for the one that we have, the awareness platform, and for instinctradio.net forward slash messages of love for the one that's all about love and relationships. Yes. And do you have anything to add to that, Audrey? No, I just need y'all to uh, watch us, call in, and try to make it to uh, one of our live live forums. The next one is November the 17th at 7 o'clock at the Adamsville Recreation Center. And we hope to see you there. What can one expect at the, the live forums? What type of topics do you cover? It's different topics. Mostly it's um, about what's going on at the time. Like our last forum, we talked about the voting rights. You know, it was a lot of things that we found out that you could do that you didn't know that you can do. Like homeless people can vote and stuff like that. You know, and we didn't know that. So we found out a lot of information. We had people, you know, we had a young lady and her uh, sister to come in and talk about the death of her son and her nephew, you know. So it's it's very, yeah, it's very informative. Mm-hmm. Okay, great to hear that. So, y'all, we've definitely covered a lot, a lot of ground today, but I, I'd say... Um, one of one of the pressing issues um, in the community has been has been politics. But I mean, aside from that, um, both of you ladies being here in Atlanta and, and realizing that Atlanta is such a mecca, there's so much going on here in Atlanta. There's so much topics to cover. Are there any issues or things that you want to elaborate on camera that you feel your viewers are need to really know about? I think just taking. Um just looking at the communities that we're from and different aspects of it, because my age is, is different than someone else that may be saying, you know what, that's not as, as important to us. So that's why we try to make you understand that your, vo- your vote is still your loudest voice that you have. So, of course, we talk about that, not just talking about the presidential election, but talking about voting in every election that we have. We have to start getting our millennials on that beat of voting in every election that we have. We got to talk more about why, you know, the pol- not giving excuses, but why the police are killing us you know then we got to take ownership of what's going on and say not that we have more crime more black on black crime than any other race may have you know white on white crime but let's take responsibility of what we're doing let's not focus on what anyone else is doing so what can we change in our community to make us better and to lift us up because we have to lift one another up like I tell everybody on the show Crime is not really real bad in the area that I'm in, but my husband can't sleep at night because he don't know where his 25-year-old that doesn't live at home. So from the time he goes, come from his corporate job to the time he gets home, his father's worried about him. So even though it's not automatically there where our kids are getting in trouble, it's still there because they are young African-Americans and he's still worried about them and he can't sleep. So because he can't sleep, I can't sleep until they call us and say, we have now made it home with your grandkids. Can you leave us alone? So it's there, right? So that's that. That's the important. Of, that's why we're trying to do this, so we can bring everyone together and they get a chance. We don't decide what we're going to talk about. The community decides what we're going to talk about. We bring the panelists there for them to decide what they want to ask the panelists. Mm-hmm. Great. Now, so one last question, and this goes to you, Audrey. Um, what a, What do you feel is the biggest misconception or, or the thing that people just don't get about being an internet radio personality? Ah. Uh. I don't know because I don't I don't know, Kale. We'll just look at Do you have anything to say about that, Kale? I don't know. We we just, we just have fun. We just ask our questions. We just have fun, and it's not a question answer type um, radio show that we have on either one of the shows that I have. But it is a conversation. We have a conversation. They get a chance to really say what they want to say, and you know, we bring in some some life instances or whatever they're talking about, and then we let people know a lot of things that we were not aware of that we're learning so much from having these radio shows because we didn't know how bad you know sex trafficking was here in Georgia. We didn't know how bad some of the violence was here in Georgia because I'm from Mobile, Alabama, you know, and I'm from an area that does have a lot of crime, but I didn't know it was, how bad it was here. So we're learning so much more as our guests come on and talk to, you know, our audience, but we're learning as well. So it's informative to everyone. That's great, Kale. That's great, Kale. <laughs> Where are you from, Audrey? Did I get that? I'm from Atlanta. Yes. And can I say this? Uh, Make sure y'all tune in second Sunday, <laughs> Success Radio, from 7 to 9 on instinctradio.net. Thank you, ladies. And just to my understanding, do you, you host the show together? Yes. 
Yes, yes. there's four of us. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Four it's four of us. Okay. Are the other two here tonight or are they on the way? They wasn't able to make it tonight, you know. So we came out to represent. Yeah. Well, they're here in spirit. They, they're here in spirit. Well, actor, so she's, she's on set today, and the other one is a, a big guru in her own sense. So she's out doing her thing for there. But once one of us show up, we're all four here in spirit. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Kale. Thank you, Audrey. And we will be staying staying and keeping up with, with that show and all that Instinct Radio is doing. I'm loving it. And, y'all, thank you for continuing to roll with us hang tight we've got some more great footage for you Here, welcome to the airwave. We met some incredible people tonight, and one of them standing with me now is music executive Terry Moore. Hey. What brings you out tonight, Terry? Here to help support Jason Sanders, who asked John Sanders who asked me to come out, and Renata Lacey. So I'm just glad to be here. Great. Definitely, yes. So your title precedes you as a music executive, and and from what I've heard, you have worked with everybody, and yes, so. And he, <laughs> what 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 are some of those contacts? Who does those include? Uh, MC Light, mm-hmm. Queen Latifah, Puffy, uh, Buster Vaughn from Leaders of the New School, uh, Landic Records, MTV, Walt Disney World. You heard of the song Self Destruction? I have not. Self Destruction, which was like an all star cast of black on black crime. The sort of we've had uh, Public Enemy in it, Thessa Sonics in it, Daddy O from Thessa Sonics Light. And uh, I was a part of that, that project. Worked with Damon Wayans and the More Money soundtrack and Sinead O'Connor. So God is good. Wow. And yeah, that's, that's good. That's a whole, a whole long roster of people, of, of beautiful, fa- famous people. How did you get connected or, or put on with those people? And, and what, where did you start your journey here in Atlanta? Well, my, I'm actually from New York, originally born in New York. And my journey started literally by calling every recording studio in New York saying that I want to work for free. Out of 100 studios that I called, only one or two said come in. And I worked at one recording studio called Evergreen Recording Studio where I pretty much did everything. Cleaned the toilet, went for food, uh, ordered food, uh, answered the phone. But that opportunity led me to be able to work, not work in the studios, but sort of be in the studios, uh, the same studios when Yoko Ono came and did a show, uh, did a track and uh, Roy Ayers and Brenda K. Starr who discovered Mariah Carey. So that was a blessing. That was my journey and then from there went on to Billboard magazine. I worked at Billboard for about a year. Oh man, and I think what I, what I gather from your story is just a deep admiration that I have for your hustle because I know uh, contacting a hundred companies and only hearing back from one, I would have stopped it maybe like I would have stopped it maybe like 20 and been like okay well this isn't working out for me Uh, but you hustled and you made it through what yeah what fueled that drive i I just felt like i could do it i was like i wanted to get into the music industry i saw prince perform on the american music Awards, and i had no idea at that moment what i wanted to do in my life but when i saw that performance i said that's what i want to do i want to do something like he's doing having fun and getting paid to do it i want to be in the music industry and that was in 1988 yeah. Beautiful. And you've been going strong, going long oh, ever since. I'm 51. I'll be 52 on Thursday. So, <laughs> yeah. You don't look at it. It looks good on you. It looks good on you. <laughs> Tell us more about your involvement in particular with these stars. I mean, you've worked with MC Light, Queen Latifah, and some more power players in the industry. But what type of work have you done with them? How have you collaborated with them? Uh, with Light, I was a publicist for about eight years. I did Light's publicity. I worked with Queen Latifah when uh, I did a celebrity basketball game with Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith used to work at, uh, used to be for the Houston Rockets. Uh, who else I've worked with? Positive K, Milk and Giz, Audio 2 had a, one of the top hip hop songs, Top Billing, which is sampled over 280 times. Uh, so I worked with Milk and Giz, did their PR, and uh, just worked on different projects. Worked with MTV on a TV show called The Grind. NBA Entertainment, the 1992 All-Star Game when I was working with Light. So just a lot of different areas. Yeah. 
That is good. And, and just you've gone through that list. You have a resume and a roster that's like as long as this backdrop over here. <laughs> Do you offer any services to people in the community per se that, that want to enter the entertainment industry but just really don't know how um, what do you do for them yeah actually I have a website called learnthemusicbusiness.com which I started about six years ago with Light um, it teaches artists about the music industry we've got people like entertainment attorneys involved we've got Kendall Minter who's involved Kendall has worked with everybody from Jagged Edge to Ashanti Diana Lynch is involved with the project. We've got stylist Brandy Wells, who did the stylist for Eric Benet and Steve Harvey. So all these people are on this website teaching about the music industry, giving tips and ideas about the music industry. I'm also an inspirational speaker, and I've written about three books. Yeah, all about the Beautiful. music industry. Learning the music industry. We will definitely keep tabs on that. Tell us more about your books and any future projects you have coming up in the works. Give us some background on that. The book is called Fearless Dreams. That's one of the books. And it basically talks about all the different people that I've interacted with in my career, from Janet Jackson to Madonna. Do you have any, like, poke out stories or yeah. maybe scandals that have, you no, know, no stuck scandals. out to you that no you can sh give, give us a little tidbit about? I sure can. Uh, one of the stories I share in the book is um, when I was living in New York, I was coming from a music industry party. And I was on the way to the train station, but I stopped at this retail store, and I was looking at the clothes in the display window. And as I was looking at the clothes, this gentleman walked by me. I could see the reflection of him walking past me. And I remember turning to my right, and I said, what's up, Chris? And he looked back at me and said, what's up, man? And I started to say something to him, like, you know, is everything good? You all right? Because he looked like he was kind of down. But I decided, no, I'm going to leave him alone. And I went back to looking at the window. When I looked back down the street, he was gone, and it was Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. That's one of the stories. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's cool, and that was before his stardom, right? Before, before anybody way knew him. Before. <laughs> way before. <laughs> We're talking 87, 86, <laughs> way before. That's cool that yeah. you got that firsthand experience. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you, Mr. Renaissance Man of the Entertainment Industry, is there any... Manager. <laughs> Manager. <laughs> touché, touché. Um, so... In terms of issues here in Atlanta, or is there anything in the city that you uh, want to see touch more on in the media or bring about on camera? Well, I think what would really need to happen is that this is a business. I'm talking from the music side. So this goes out to all the artists out there. This is a business. Learn the business. Stop trying to just be an artist. If you're just trying to be an artist, it's a hobby. This is a business. Learn the industry. Find out who the key players are. Order Billboard magazine, go to industry parties and network, but learn the business, learn about trademark, learn about copyright. This is a business for a reason, music business. So absolutely learn about it. I love that you say that, Terry, because I feel like, yeah, so it, it is important to be well-versed. Yeah. And you have so many more one band you know one man bands now yeah. you know and that's important because the industry is so very competitive right. so thank you so much terry you, what are you going to do now are you going to go and mingle and i'm going to go and mingle can i give a shout out yeah okay. go ahead i want to give a shout out just came from the memorial from tommy ford wonderful brother known tommy ford for about six years from the tv show martin we miss you we love you see you soon my brother thank you terry wise words from a very renaissance man and Thank you so much for watching the interview. We have more great show for you. This is On Your Guest List. I'm your host, Simone Jameson.
Joanna, thank you for continuing to roll with us. Here, welcome to the airwaves. It's been such an incredible night. I've met so many great people. Standing with me now is one of those delicious people, Miss Reva the Diva. How are you doing tonight, Reva? Miss Make You a Believer. Make, Miss Make You a Believer. What do you expect to What do you expect to get out of this event tonight, Reva? Well, I've already gotten out of that. Um, I actually interviewed with Taylor. Um, she's over there with Instinct Radio. Shout out to Instinct Radio. Um, I was invited out. And I'm actually here representing my radio station, revampradio.com. And I'm from Houston, Texas, so from the H to the A. And I've been really uh, blessed to have such a warm welcome to Atlanta. I want to say that first and foremost. I definitely have received so much love and support since I've been here. H to the A, yeah. So <laughs> congratulations. Well, well, thank you. You know, it's great to see you out here. How how has your journey been in radio, and how does it how has it been different in Houston versus Atlanta? My journey in radio, I've been doing it for about three years. So I first started off with a friend from high school. We were having, uh, we had our show, Hot Talk Radio. And we did that for a little while. And I just knew that I wanted to do something for me. So my name's Reva, and it's Revamp Radio. The first four letters are capitalized in it because of I'm putting myself into it. I'm one of those people who feel that anything I put my stamp on, it's going, it's going to definitely embody who I am and um, empower people through the way that I empower and um, affirm myself. So um, just difference of my career. First and foremost, this is, what, this is what you don't, people don't understand. When you're working towards a goal and you're working towards a dream, it does take a lot of time. It does take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And it also takes a lot of money. Um, so once you get those three things out the way, that actually is the start of your journey. Once I, all the equipment was, was um, paid for, once the studio was set up, once we had the website up, once we had everything in order, it was like, oh, it seems like a long ride, but this is actually day one. And so it's been an awesome journey. We actually launched July 10th, uh, the first episode, um, and we've been doing very well. We're on our second season now. We're on, uh, the season has ended, so it commences uh, November 15th. It'll be the first show, so make sure y'all tune in to revampradio.com for that. Yes, um, but the difference most definitely there is a there is a difference. Um, I think the thing the biggest thing is the fact that I am from Houston, Texas. I've been in the Houston, Texas, and the media um, and the socialites for a while. Um, you also understand and you accept you know people as your friends, and it's more so um, they know who you are as you grow throughout your transition of growing. It's kind of hard to accept sometimes, but coming to a fresh place with a fresh face, it's, it's like a whole different wave over you, and it definitely does help you revamp, like revamp radio. It goes for so many different things, um, but it definitely helps you revamp yourself as a person and actually refocus in on what you're doing with your career. So my station, like this is all, what I get from this is just, um, it's basically helping me to take my station to the next level by seeing different people here, interacting with them, figuring out what they're doing, because it's all trial and error, and it's all you know learning experiences. And my goal and my end goal is cause to be, and if she will let me, if she will allow Oprah, I want to be the next Oprah. <laughs> when she you know steps down, she was, I want her to pass the torch to me, because I've, I've had a life where I've experienced a lot of things that most people be like, you know, it's... You, you don't seem like you've been through all of that, but I have been through a lot of things, and I, and I have something to say, and my thing is empowerment of people. I want to help people. Oftentimes you find that people um, need are in need and desperate need of advice from people, but they don't know how to get it from those that they're around because it's not well received, because the intent is good, but just it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So I feel that I've been blessed with that gift of gab, and I want to help the world understand the knowledge that, that they've been, you know, missing out on also the help that that's necessary for people to move forward in life because one thing about it my motto from the movie the cartoon movie meet the robinsons is keep moving forward i can't stress that enough like if you keep moving forward and keep doing what you love there's no option but success only way you can fail is by giving up and so that's something i consistently preach and i just want to empower people in doing and i do that on a daily on my radio show Absolutely. That's beautiful. Isn't that, isn't that peachy? Like that, that you are able to, to, uh, you have, exactly, mm -hmm. having the gift to be gathered. And mm -hmm. I feel like being in radio, you do kind of have a mission to the people in order to, to, well, to be a voice. And then not only just have a mission to do it, you have a mission to stay true to yourself as well. Because a lot of times, often you find that people come into it and they just want to be heard. But it's like, are you being heard for the right reasons? Are you really here? to help and to change and motivate and, and empower people and that's what it's about and those are the people who last those are the people who continue to flourish in their careers and in jesus name that will be me very very soon y'all stay on the lookout reva the diva is coming aka miss make you all a believer i'm telling you in christ as well i do have a segment on the show and i want to talk about that just really briefly it's called the enlightenment hour it's very near dear to me because i'm very strong in the word of god i believe that nothing can exist um, nothing of my talent my strength cannot exist by my own it's on his accord and it's for his 
glory, not mine. So I do make sure I magnify him and glorify him in that. So we have an hour of what we do. As, um, it's really fun because I like to do music. I think it's a song for everything. We'll take a little snippet from, like for an example, we did um, from uh, The Color Purple. God's trying to tell you something, you know, whenever she comes over from singing at the, at the little boom boom shack or whatever, and she comes over to church. So we did that. And that's like another concept of radio because it doesn't necessarily have to be a song. Why not? Let's take these clips and snippets like they do on the albums and let's mix it up a little bit. So we do that. We, we soften it up and then we get into the word. And it's not that word like you're going to go to hell. You're going to die of sin. No, no, no. We, we're here to free you because in your, it's in your mind. You have to be free in the mind. That's how you're able to flourish in the world. And so we help you with that. That's what the light hours about. So make sure y'all go to revampradio.com and check it out because I'm telling you it's something you definitely want to get involved in now because you will hear it. If you don't hear it today, you will hear it soon. <laughs> I love that Revan. I love I love your attitude you. about it. I think and another thing that I wanted to, the cream of the crop rises to the top y'all. So so definitely remember that. How can we keep up with you? What are your websites and social media? My website is revampradio.com. My social media on Instagram is Reva the Diva. And now that's Reva, R-E-V-A, D-A-D-I-V-A, underscore 2K16. And then my Facebook, you can go uh, facebook.com backslash. You can go Reva the Diva 711. And so um, that's how you can reach me. Also, any artists, we're actually going into the 24-hour uh, transition of having been on consistently to, to solidify the station itself. So we're asking that all artists go to the website and subscribe to revampradio.com, and you will get an email that will tell you how to submit your music. We want your music. Please submit your music. I love new artists. I love artists. It's, a, it's an amazing thing because I love music. I love people, and I love artists. Just to see and speak with so many different people and see the passion that they have behind what they do, it's amazing. And it's like, that's motivation. Like, let's motivate motivate each other let's let's uplift each other and, and and just be that that force to reckon with and and come together all as one absolutely absolutely I, I totally I totally agree and totally believe in that and I, I feel like that's what D Hill is and and what this event is doing here tonight absolutely. so after you leave here um what else do you have going on and in terms of future projects what are those looking like well, um, right now I'm actually going to another event. I'm a little late too, but you know, better late than never is what they say. Um, it's actually a mixer, um, and then after the mixer, it's like a um, a networking mixer where you'll meet the people that you need to meet. I, I, I'm a strong believer in networking. Your network is worth is what your net worth will be. Because if you don't, it's not about what you know, and that is so true. Because people find themselves, and I know how to do all of this. I know how to do all of that, and it's like, no, you need to. You can't do it by yourself. You need you need help. So I'm going to that event. I also have a fashion show I'm going to tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. I've I've, I've shopped at all of you all's malls here in Atlanta. I want to let you know that I thoroughly have enjoyed them all. I hope you all have thoroughly enjoyed the money that I've given to the city of Atlanta. You're welcome. You know, I graciously give that. <laughs> No, but um, future projects, you know, you can look for me. I'm looking to um, go ahead and get full-fledged into television, hosting maybe game shows, hosting events, maybe just covering different things. I love to cover um, events. Um, I'm huge on that because I love to have fun and talk at the same time. Like, talking is my life. I can do this forever. <laughs> like, we can go on for an hour. But um, future, definitely, you, you'll see me on the big screen. I, I've, I've done acting before. I've done a, a show, uh, a movie, Houston Hustle, out there in Houston. A um, couple short films coming up, so just stay tuned. RevampRadio.com. You can follow on me on Instagram, Reva the Diva underscore 2K16 again. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you, on. Reva. You've been an absolute sunshine, ray of sunshine. Thank you. <laughs> and so, congratulations on all your success, and we look forward to seeing you on the big screen soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's <laughs> Thank a pleasure. you. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. This has been On the Guest List. I'm your host, Simone Jameson with Reva. Atlanta. Thank you for joining us here with On the Guest List. Welcome to the radio airwaves. I'm here with Blizzom, program director at K100. How are you, Blizzom? I'm great, and I'm here in support of uh, every radio station that's here uh, for this event. Uh, I just want to say thank you uh, for D Hill and Sean Garvin, and everybody who put this together, just to show us some love, man. It's really hard getting a lot of support, you know, from just the people, but when you have people, uh, your comrades in arms, that's doing the same thing to show you support. That's, it means all the world, you know, so we got to go out here and support each other. If we want to ex ex expect people to support us in our movement, we got to do the same thing and show that love. And that's why I'm here. And I always try to come to any of these events that's showing love to the radio community, the Internet radio community. You know, that, that's like my f extended family at the end of the day. Yeah. Exactly. We appreciate you being out here showing your love and support. Absolutely. How did you become program director? 
Um, well, I'm the creator of, K of K100 Radio, so you know it's, it's my brainchild. Um, you know, my background is in media production, but first and foremost, I, I'm an artist and a producer and an engineer. You know what I'm saying? So I had the technical expertise to get into it, and um, I just wanted to make a platform for other artists like myself who, who I felt like just wasn't given a, a fair shot with payola and the big time budget that you need to attack FM radio. So I decided to you know take my knowledge and build a platform for other artists like myself. You know, they had great music but didn't have a real outlet. And I did it, and I started it small. I started out on Blog Talk Radio like a lot of other people that's in here. Um, and then I took it to a 24-7 stream, and it exploded, you know. And it became popular really quick on its own. It grew its own legs. It's all organic, you know what I'm saying. And um, it's just a platform. And if you build a platform that's really good, really solid, you build it, they will come. It's that simple, yeah. Absolutely. Beautiful. So how, is, how has the road to success been for you? It's been actually easy because what happened was it wasn't I, I built I built the platform, but Thanks for watching Atlanta. I'm your host, Simone Jameson, for On The Guest List. Still rolling at the Welcome to the Radio Airwaves event. Here with me now is Dr. Gloria Milo, a psychologist and women's empowerment activist here in Atlanta. What brings you out tonight, Gloria? Uh, Dee Hill. Actually, she's my friend, and I came out to support her. Yeah. And I have uh, four books that I've written, and I brought them out so you could view them and just take a look at Here's some of the things I have to say to ladies. Yeah, well, we definitely like to like to take a look at some of those. I, I really love, we've been getting a, a lot of women empowerment and really positive community issues here at this event, so we're really thankful for that. So you got spiritual, spiritual seduction. Give us an introduction to that. This is Secret Sin, Stress, Struggle, Yet Surviving. And this story is about a young girl, 17 years old, being manipulated into drugs, sex, and alcohol by her pastor, mega pastor, and she was servicing all of his friends, mega friends, when they would go to the Los Angeles area. And it was like a hold on her because they threatened to kill her if she would tell what was going on. And she went on and on and on with this life until one day God pulled her out of it and she never looked back. She ended up getting her AA degree, her bachelor's degree, her master's degree, and yet her PhD. And this is a true story, Simone. This is my testimony. I was just about to ask you that. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, you've been through so much. Thank you. And go out and buy the book. I either get it off my website, which is www mgspublishing.com Then I have another book that's out called Moments of Meditation. Each day you can meditate and I'm willing to 
bet you, guarantee you that if you opened this book and read your birthday, it would be something for you, directly from God. When is your birthday, Simone? It is July 10th. Okay, will you look at July 10th while I get the other book and let's check it out. Sure, sure, yeah. It starts from January. It starts from January. Okay, oh, this is making me so excited, y'all. I, I really love doing these. I do them online all the time, so I'm kind of like, ooh, I want to know what it says. It's almost like a fortune. Uh, so I'm scrolling, scrolling here to my birth date. I'm trying to scroll a little bit faster now. Okay. Oh, my best is yet to come. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Wow, this is, a, this is empowering. This is really empowering, really expiring. So moments of meditation, and for people that aren't really familiar with, with meditating and with, with really getting the type of, I guess, maybe personal uh, or like self-actualization that comes from meditating, how would one start with that? You start every day, maybe about five minutes or ten minutes, just being quiet, just you. And then you can find out who you really are and stop saying, I am a teacher, I am a doctor. Find out who you are for real. You don't have to define yourself by a profession. I like that. <laughs> I think that's really important. I and lastly? Lost my mom uh, April 20th. 2016, five minutes before her 89th birthday. Uh, my mother and I had a very wonderful relationship. So I wrote this book called Mommy, I Love You. And it seems very juvenile. It tells how mama teaches you how to love, care, share, respect, honor, obey. But the last page is the one that really gets all of us, or touches all of us. It says, but you didn't teach me how to miss you when you're gone. So I invite everyone to go out and get this book. It's not so much for children. It means a lot to all of us, too, because we all have mothers. And January 2017, I plan to do something with all the ladies that are motherless. Wow, you just have such a big and giving and loving heart. How did you get started really doing what you're doing? How did this sort of kick off as a profession for you? Mama. My mother was a teacher, and I had no other, I, could, I had no other choice but to go to college, too. So I ended up being a teacher also. I'm a retired teacher of 39 years, K through 12, been sometimes an administrator, but then I led on to follow up with psychology and also in the ministry. Yes. Great. Great to hear. Great, great hustle that you've had going on. And, <laughs> and it's great to see all of, all of your books and, and the inspiration that really preys out between the pages. Now, I know the common theme for authors has been wanting to go to big publishing houses wanting to go in major retailers wanting to go to big screens or maybe the theaters or plays do you see that in your future or are you doing any co collaborations or partnerships to make that possible this time well i believe in the vision board and thus far i've made it to all my dreams and that is one of my dreams to make spiritual seduction on big screen Yes. Look forward to that, Gloria. Is there any tidbit of advice or issues or anything that you want to leave as last words here with your interview with us? Sure. I have an organization called Healing Hurting Women. And I just want to say, ladies, start talking about your problems. Um, they don't have to be problems. Just start talking. Stop keeping all this bitterness inside of you and this anger and sadness in you and taking it to your grave talk about it and you'll see that you will be free talk about it talk about it exactly thank you so much gloria and dr dr gloria milo it's been an absolute pleasure and we'll be keeping on the lookout for your books and what are your website social media www.mgspublishing.com 
And thank you so much, Simone. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed all of our coverage tonight. Don't miss any more. Hey, Atlanta. Thank you for joining us here on the guest list. Here with George Willis, the general manager here at Backstage. We're here at the Welcome to Radio Airwaves event. How are you, George? How are you feeling tonight? I'm doing well. It was a great turnout, a great event. I'm really excited about it, and I'm looking for many more opportunities like that. Absolutely. So uh, we were speaking a little bit earlier, and you were telling me that you also go by G Money, and that's sort of your entertainment uh, link into the industry. And you've worked with, as I understand, some artists and some professionals here in Atlanta. Tell us more about that. Absolutely. Actually, um, I started out at a club here in Atlanta and eventually winded up in Macon, Georgia, for like 14 years and um, was very instrumental in starting Young Jeezy's career, me and Otis Redding III. And we took him to uh, DJ Drama. We did that first Trap or Die, gave it to Greg Street, and it took off, and the rest is history. Yeah. What was it like working with Jeezy, and how did he get discovered? Uh, well, Jeezy was doing some other stuff. He had a, a group called Young Guns, and one of the members in Young Guns got in trouble and went to jail. So that's when Otis said, let's get Jeezy to do this song. And we got Jeezy to do the song, and he had that raspy voice, and it just took off from there. And, and then you, you heard of the uh, book uh, BMF, The Rise and Fall of Big Meech? Yeah, I'm in that book, and they're talking about me and Jeezy in that book and stuff like that. And, and when Jeezy had the song Icy with uh, Gucci Man, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff went down. So been around a while, but I've also done a lot of concerts with Lil Wayne, T.I., Jeezy, 2 Chain, Rick Ross. I'm in a couple of commercials with CeeLo Green and, you know, just done a lot. But I came here because Joe Douglas, the owner of Backstage, asked me, you know, to come help him out after I closed my club in Macon. And Joe is the, uh, the manager for Frankie Beverly and Mays, and he's been managing Frankie Beverly for 32 years. He's also handling the merchandising for R. Kelly. He does a um, he has a Sir Charles Jones, Silk, H Town, uh, Stephanie Mills. He he does a lot, you know. So I handle the business here for him while he's on the road doing so many other things. So it's a it's a great place. Backstage is on the south side of Atlanta. When I tell people about it, they don't have any idea the magnitude of this building. You know, I mean, we, we draw a lot from Fayetteville, Peachtree City, Noonan, and from Atlanta. So we do a lot with um, uh, UPS, uh, Delta, um, uh, Tyler Perry Studios. Like tonight, we have about six big birthday parties going on. So, and, and we're 30 and up. We don't, I know I started out in hip hop. Don't do hip hop anymore. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah, that was going to be my next question, is how you entered that industry. And uh, you being uh, now the right-hand man, Joe, see, see you developed a beautiful friendship, but also being um, a, a general manager and also having had your own club in Macon. Were you always in this arena? Or what were you doing before you came into this? Actually, I was a therapist for Fulton County Detox. I went to Morehouse. So, and I'm, I'm still on the Fulton County Youth Commission. We um, do a lot of contributions to Clayton County, um, the Youth Detention Center, and we do a lot with the community center down the street. And so we stay, uh, Joe has a nonprofit called um, um, the Douglas Foundation. So we do a lot of giving back, you know, and then I have a ministry actually called George Willis Ministries. So we stay connected, you know, and we keep it really clean. So. You know, we try to stay involved and do positive things as well as music. Absolutely. That's really important. What are some of the, the acts or some of the, the, the um, people that have come through backstage that have really stuck out to you? Mm, probably uh, people like, you know, Tommy that just died from Martin. Used to come here a lot. Um, Joe is so connected. Um, we've had a lot of comedians like Bruce Bruce used to do Wednesdays here. A lot, yeah. And uh, we had um, DC Curry, all those guys. But on top of uh, Silk and H-Town and, 
Sir Charles Jones and Tony Terry and all those people, they hang out here a lot. So, you know, it's just when they're in town, it just depends on what Joe has going on. He does a lot of shows here in Atlanta at the Fox and at Wolf Creek. So usually when people are here that he has a relationship with, when they finish, this is the place that they come to. So Cool, cool. It's always, it's, it's definitely good to hear that this is a kind of a go-to place and a sort of like a, you know, a home, like a really... A really cozy type place for really Absolutely. people to just kind of chill and relax. So, are you a native of Atlanta? Where are you from originally? Born and raised right here on the west side. I'm a bankhead baby. Okay. <laughs> I went to Douglas High School. I went to Morehouse College. You know, I moved away for a while, you know, um, but this is home for me and I love Atlanta. Atlanta's a melting pot. Everything you want is right here. You don't have to go anywhere. It's a smaller version of New York. You know, it's just so many different nationalities and people are not not uh, racist. You know, you can deal with all different types of people. You know, you got difficult people of all different races. You just have to pick the right people to be involved with. So, um, you know, I love Atlanta. I don't think I'll ever move. I love to travel, though. I love to go visit other places, but I always come back home here. I love that. It, it goes, uh, what is the saying? Georgia fed Southern bread. Yeah, <laughs> so you definitely fall into that category. Speaking of Atlanta and, and backstage, are there any issues in Atlanta that you want to see brought to light or anything that you want to discuss more on camera? Yes. Um, although I say, you know, this is a melting pot and there's different uh, races and nationalities. I really try to promote keeping uh, black money in the black community. We need to spend money with each other. You know, a lot of times we make the money and we go spend it somewhere else. I think Atlanta at some point can be like it used to be when Auburn Avenue was the, the richest black street in the world. You know, and Atlanta's going to be that again. So I try to encourage our young people, especially through music, when they see me and Jeezy and T.I. and 2 Chain and all those people, you know, I said, this is a business. You know, this is not a big party. It looks like that. And a lot of people are partying here, but this is a business. So you have to treat it as such and it can feed you. So I but and you don't have to drink and do drugs. To be in this industry, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. So um, it's good to to keep it in perspective. Okay. Thank you so much, George. You're welcome. Yeah. So we, we definitely appreciate the contributions you've made to to backstage and to Atlanta. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This is on the guest list. Brought to you by StreamATL.net. Atlanta. And there you have it. This has been an exciting night here at the Welcome to Radio Airwaves event. We've interviewed with some exclusive guests, met some incredible and talented personalities, and hopefully have given you some community issues and things to think about and really take away from. So we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'm your host, Simone Jameson, for On the Guest List. Thank you for watching us here at StreamATL.net.